What's up all of you guys that like to keep reefs on your roofs? Today I'm gonna talk about beginner mistakes in reefing hobby. If this is your first time on the channel, my name is Goran. I'm a hobbyist located in suburbs in Chicago and on this channel I talk all things reef related. With that out of the way, let's jump into today's topic. Number one on the list is gonna be like this video and number two on the list is subscribe. Oh, this is this is the wrong list. All right, let's let me yeah, this is the wrong list. Let's let's jump into our actual list. First of the list that I made a mistake with is uh, I was messing around with my LEDs. Don't do it. Just don't. When you set up your reef tank, either rent a power meter or just copy and paste the programming from some other reefer that has the same lighting as you have. It has the same tank. Just figure out a way to do it. But when you do set it up, just leave it as is and don't do nothing with it. Yes, you can change the lighting afterwards, but that's just for professionals. There's actually people out there that breed corals and that's what they do, they change temperatures, they change lighting period, that's how they make corals spawn. If you're not that person, don't do it. Just don't change lighting, leave them as is. When you set up your tank, just set them up and leave them alone. All right, my second thing on the list, if you're gonna use heaters for your reef tank, you have to plug them in in some type of controller. Either if you have Neptune Apex heater controller on itself, whatever you have, don't use them just on its own. Use it with the controller. I know there's heaters out there. They're supposed to be very good. They're made of titanium or a type of metal. I like to use heater that has thermometer on it as well, because that's a backup on top of my controller. If a heater has a switch on top of it or on a side that you can control the heat with it, I will use those heaters no matter which one they are. And just make sure if you have a glass one or any heater that's brittle that you can break, just make sure to put them somewhere in the sump where you won't be able to break it. Don't put it next to your skimmer because next time you clean that skimmer, you're gonna break that glass heater or whatever you have going on. I usually like to set up my heaters just itsy bitsy higher than what my controller is doing. And that way if my controller gets bad, my heater backs it up. Number three is pH. I had a very hard time keeping hard corals under that low pH. If you don't have a problem with it, then you go ahead, do your thing. When my pH was below eight, I had a very hard time keeping SPS. Yes, 8.2, 8.3 might be perfect. Some people keep it even higher, but at the minimum, I would keep it at eight pH during the night comes down and then during the day comes up when your lighting is on in your tank. I like to use call washer to bring it up and uh, I'm gonna leave it at that. All right, number four, don't keep your phosphates and nitrates on zero. I would say phosphates keep them at minimum on 0 0.03. Yes, you can keep them higher as well, but just be careful that you don't get phosphate spike. When you get phosphate spike, bad things can happen. Nitrates were usually minimum for me is three, but usually I keep them around five or higher because three is too close to the zero. Nitrates can be a little bit more forgiving. If you keep it a little bit higher, just be careful raising too high because you might get weird things happening in your tank as far as the theory goes, like cyan and other things. So just have that in mind. All right, number five. Don't add corals in your tank without dipping. Purchase any type of dip on the market. I use bear. Bear is very tricky for you to use. You have kids in the house or you're not careful and you spill that you might be in a trouble. So I would say don't use a bear just cause I'm talking to a variety of people here. Use something else. Or if you use bear, just be very, very, very careful. All right, let's talk about fish as well. I do not quarantine fish cause I've tried quarantining and it didn't work out for me. It is a little bit tricky. You have to do lots of research so you can learn how to quarantine and do it right. Cause there is lots of wrong ways how to quarantine. So if you decide to quarantine, do a lot of research, which you can put into your quarantine system and do it right. But what I'll do at the minimum, try to purchase a fish that is quarantined already, or the fish that it's captive bred, or at the minimum have UV under your tank. And what I like to use as well as the safety stuff. It's a um, rapid fish quarantine. You do 45 minutes one dip, 45 minutes another dip, and then you're good to go. At the minimum, that's what I'll use. I'll do safety stuff, UV. Usually when I like to introduce new fish into the tank, I like to use 
acrylic box where I put it kind of on the side of the tank and I put the fish there for a few days and let all the old fish see the newbie and get to know each other, feed him good there, make sure that he's good to go and then I'll add him to the tank. All right, let's see what's next. Test more often. I have done a special video on this topic. If you haven't checked it out, go and check it out on my channel. There's three parameters, especially the want you to keep an eye on, that's salinity, temperature, and alkalinity. And as I said, keep an eye on that pH, where it's at, make sure there are phosphates and nitrogen are not bottoming out. Just make sure that everything is in order. I know there's gonna be some days it's gonna be great outside, you're gonna to wanna to do barbecue, you're gonna play games, you're gonna watch games, you're gonna do whatever you wanna do, but just make a schedule for your testing and do it. One thing that helped me get over it is picking a test kits that are easier to do. The test kits that are more reliable and easier to do. So for instance, I like to do is handle culinary checker, nice and easy, bam, 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 two minutes, I'm done, even less. All right. Let me see what's next. Don't use tap water on your reef tank. Use any type of other filters. I tried to skip this in the beginning and it didn't really work out for me. On my mind was RDR filters are too expensive. They're too much to take care of, but they're actually not. Even if you test your water right off the bat, if you're gonna go that route, you're gonna pick up your water, you're gonna test it, see what you have in it. And then you're gonna grab filters just to take care of that. But no, your tap water won't be constant. What that means is that means that some potent stuff can come in into waves. And that's the stuff, for instance, that you haven't tested the first time you did it. So what I suggest is just grab the whole unit. It's gonna take care of everything. It's gonna take care of all of your bases. It'll never have a problem. You never think that your water is a problem. Eighth and is don't add dry rock or dry sand into your tank. If you're gonna add sand, I suggest adding live sand. If you wanna add more rock to your tank, cure that rock for at least two months and then add it to your tank. I have bad experience with this and I don't want you guys to have the same. So just be careful. Don't add any dry sand and dry rock into your tank. Cure that rock or add live sand to your system and then you'll be good to go. Number nine, this is kind of topic that I like to talk about. I like to make my life easier with using for instance, easier test kits or a bigger ATO container. When I started this hobby, I had a small little 10 gallon container that I had next to my sump. And oh man, I had no idea that I had to refill that thing every other day. I'm like, this is not what I'm going to do. So just make your life easier. Right now what I have, even on my 40 gallon tank, I have 30 gallon brute trash container underneath it and I have to refill that container probably every four months. So that's a way to go. That is truly a way to go. The bigger container you have, even if you're dosing anything, the bigger container you have for dosing, the less things you're gonna have to do to take care of that tank. If you're gonna do water change, make sure if you're gonna do it manually, try to figure out ways to do it easier. Try to make your life easier. If you can set up auto water changes, go that route. There's lots of ways to skin a cat in this hobby. So just make sure everything you do, just do it easier. Like for instance, if you're adding corals in the beginning and you don't dip them and you don't cut the frag plugs, you're gonna introduce aptasia, bubble algae, vermin and snails. And then afterwards, guess what happens? You're gonna have to put more work to take care of that tank. You're gonna have to go in there and smash those guys or pick up or kill aptasia. Or... So the more work you put in the beginning, the less work you're gonna have afterwards. And the more work you put into setting up your system, later on it's gonna be easier. What I have on number 10 on the list is clean that glass on your tank. Clean your tank, clean your equipment, clean those circulation pumps, clean the skimmer, clean everything. Every single time I see online someone posting its tank and I see algae everywhere. I see dirty glass. I see pumps that are clogged. They're so bad. There's so much on them. Just clean them. If you're gonna be into this hobby, just make sure that everything looks nice. If you have someone living with you, they'll be like, you know what, this tank, uh, we kind of don't like it, get rid of it. But if it's nice and clean, everything's nice and organized, fish are nice, everything's beautiful, you won't have that problem. All right, I know these are just some of the things that I made mistake with and I struggle with during this hobby. If you have anything else, drop them down below. 
add whatever you had going on in your tank that you think people should know about. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Check me out on Facebook and Instagram. I'm over there as Reef on the Roof as well. Check the description down below. If you'd like to support this channel, like, subscribe, share, do whatever other YouTubes are telling you to do. And uh, see you guys in the next video. All right. Bye.